So in today's video, we're gonna talk about five things that I think you need to know and be really prepared for before you move to this area in 2022 and 2023. I think that unless you're willing to take these things on as potential problems or drawbacks to living here, I might suggest you reconsider your decision to move to Norfolk. And we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Santalone and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area that goes from Virginia Beach through Williamsburg and I do videos every week about living and moving to the area. So number one is the flooding concerns that are getting worse and worse in Norfolk. Now, in the general area, I'm gonna show you on the map, I'm gonna show you on Norfolk right now, the overhead. Uh, and Norfolk is a pretty large city, a pretty large land size. As you notice that it's next to Virginia Beach, next to Chesapeake, this whole area is primarily bordered around the Elizabeth River or the Chesapeake Bay. But just because you're near water does not necessarily mean that there is a high risk of flooding. And so this is one thing to, to note when you're thinking about flooding in Norfolk is that if you look at all this section on the east side, the south side, and the central side, even the north side, you'll find spots that have flooding concerns. Uh, and then, But then there are spots that for a long period of time or for a lot, a lot of uh, large spans of land across the entire city, you won't find many issues with flooding. Now, but what I want to keep in mind though is that with flooding in Norfolk, it is very specific as to the, the different kinds of flooding that there are and what your expectations are might influence what you may or may not be willing to tolerate. So number one is the flooding that's due to rising coastal sea level and also the sinking of a property in Norfolk. So the biggest issue of that type of flooding is on the west side of Norfolk near uh, Larchmont and in the, even the northern sections and even eastern sections of that area, part of Colonial Place and even in the whole that whole western section near the Norfolk Navy base. And this includes great neighborhoods like Ghent, West Ghent. Going towards Larchmont Edgewater near ODU. This whole western section has become an issue uh, even down south of, towards The Hague and just south of Ghent near downtown. This whole section here has become an issue not necessarily for short-term you know rising floodwaters or sinking property but over the next next 30, 40, 50 years you'll see you know sea level and water table uh, change to the point to where you might see about one to one and a half feet change of where the water is now to what it might be in about 50 years. And I'll show you, I'll put some links uh, in the description so you can see other research that has been done to potentially project these numbers. If you keep a house for 20 to 50 years and keep it in your, your family for decades, this is something that we at least consider and factor in if you're gonna be deciding to buy a house in this area. The other type of flooding is drainage uh, and like low-lying areas in the areas in Norfolk. Now that's still some of the same areas uh, that are problematic for the first type of flooding is also problematic for the second type in the same southwestern and western sections of Norfolk, but that can really be almost anywhere. You'll see even flooding issues in Ocean View over towards Little Creek, in, near closer to East Beach, floodwaters that might rise up closer to that section near the Ocean View area. And there's other pockets uh, through the entire city that you'll find this issue with low-lying areas, bad drainage, just intermittently across the entire city. So you have to be watching watchful as to determining, okay, where is the house that you want? And then also figuring out what kind of flooding, if there is any flooding issue, uh, what the kind of flooding is there in the neighborhood that you want to be in. That leads to flood insurance, if you need flood insurance at all. And just because you live in Norfolk does not mean that you will need flood insurance. It will depend on what flood zone you are in. And so every house has, it lies in a flood zone. So most houses lie in flood zone X or X500. But if you're in a zone AE, AE is the one that requires flood insurance and that's where where you'll see most areas or some areas that are in these spots we're talking about might lie in zone AE, which requires you to buy flood insurance, which then changes how much you might be paying for your house even after the total of the sales price of the house you buy. So that's that's the general overarching flood dynamic to keep, keep in mind for Norfolk. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about is the shopping in Norfolk and it's extremely sporadic. So if you look on the map, you'll see uh, on, uh, on the map, you'll see like, for example, Walmart and Food Lion dominate the eastern and central and kind of the north and northeastern sections of uh, Norfolk. And that doesn't, when I say dominate, I mean that what's there, the primary stores are Walmart. But if you go towards the west side, that's where you'll see the most of other types of, of uh, shopping. For example, like the Harris Teeter right near uh, Little Creek, uh, closer to the base. And also as you go further south, you'll see a Fresh Market, you'll see another Harris Teeter. Uh, and then you'll see what's coming up new near Old, Old Dominion University is a Publix, which is a real nice 
uh, shopping center, or well, I'm sorry, real nice uh, grocery store in this section too. But the problem is that there aren't that many places on the western sides or anywhere in, in Norfolk that have easy access to shopping grocery stores primarily. And so you might find yourself driving, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes to get to the one that you want. And it's not like super convenient compared to like, for example, in Virginia Beach or even Chesapeake. There's not a lot of high concentration uh, areas that have the grocery stores and the shopping you might be looking for. That's a big problem to me in the whole general area in uh, Norfolk. Now the next one is a pretty new development in uh, Norfolk that I think is very important to factor in for multiple reasons. And it could be positive or negative, which is the Headwaters Resort and Casino that's being built here and finishing in 2024. This is going to be built next to the Harbor Park, I'm gonna show you in the map, the Harbor Park uh, where the AAA baseball team plays in downtown Norfolk, near the south uh, southern corner of downtown Norfolk. So you see Norfolk Water sign just to the east of that, going over near the, the uh, uh, interstate is Harbor Park right here. Well, next to there in the parking lot, right next to it and across is going to be where the Headwaters or Casino and Resort will be, including a hotel, like ro rooftop uh, pool, um, like an activity center. Um, you've got multiple restaurants. You've got uh, 150 game tables as well as 3,000, I believe, uh, slot machines. It's a decent amount of size to where it will bring in a lot of new tourism, a lot of people that might be coming in even from local areas to come to the casino. Now, for a lot of different opinions about about this casino and what it might do to the area. Uh, you'll, see, you'll hear some people talk about the fact that it will bring in a lot of new money, multi-millions every year, and now that's that's true. However, there are some drawbacks. Number one is there are some, sometimes when you hear about casinos, the people that are going to the casinos that are local, they will be coming, going and doing other things in the area already, and they're just going to uh, switch their decision to the casino. It might just be an equal transfer of people buying uh, and doing things in one part of the city to another, so so it's really not much of a benefit, as well as other things like, for example, gambling addiction concerns, as well as people that, that do things in the casino areas, you'll notice that they're oftentimes property values are decreased in these general area around a casino. In this area, this is not this is a big area for military, and so I don't know the statistical and the actual uh, social ramifications of a casino in a place like this that's so heavy in military, that's so transient in and out, but I will say that number one is uh, it can bring some dollars to the city. At the same time, not so sure what it will do to the societal impact of the area. It's going to kind of be a TBD to be determined at this point because it's going to be finished in 2024 and the actual impact uh, to what it will do to the area itself might not be felt for several years after that. And I'm still doing more research on the casino at, uh, as we get closer to the opening. Now, another thing is that you'll notice that there's a lot of traffic in the center in the middle of Norfolk and it's hard to get out of Norfolk to other cities. So for example, well, I, I will show you here on the west western side of Norfolk, the most popular or most interesting part of Norfolk, I think, is the area near near Ghent, near like the, the uh, whole western section of Norfolk, like near Larchmont and the western Ghent. This area is great, especially if you're already there. The problem is, is that if you're in this section, it can be very difficult to get out and over into other parts of the area, like for example, into Virginia Beach on the, on the eastern side of the area, or Chesapeake, or even into the peninsula as well. Even though you're close to the Interstate 64, which takes you to the tunnel, if you're not close to an interstate, it can not only back up on uh, side roads, but getting off into the interstate six systems can be kind of problematic, especially if it if it's rush hour and especially if it's raining. Uh, you'll see issues with that, with the flooding I mentioned before. So you know, a ha uh, an area that might seem like you're only a couple miles away could take you 10, 15, 20 minutes longer than you might expect to get from one side of the city to the other. So I definitely would factor that in if you do live in, especially the inner parts of the western parts of Norfolk. Now the next thing is that Norfolk in general is a very stagnant city. It has not been growing over the last 20 plus years. And there are some reasons to that. If you look on the graph, I'll show you. In the last, you know, well in the first, you know, 150, almost 200 years, you'll notice that the, the population zoomed up all the way up to the 300,000-ish range uh, as we get into the 60s and 70s. But over time, it kind of stagnated. It went down in the, around the 2,000 range, 230,000 people, 35,000 people. But and since then, it's really kind of top, topped out and kind of leveled out into 2022 where we're at, at 240,000. So not much happening as far as change in population uh, in Norfolk. Now, to me, one of the biggest reasons is uh, 
uh, for that is the fact that the largest industries in this area, primarily the military uh, and uh, hospitals and medical fields, are pretty much they're here. And not, not a lot of large things have changed over the last 15 to 20 years. That's number one thing. Number two thing is, though is that if you look on the map of Norfolk, one thing you'll notice is that it is essentially landlocked between water and Virginia Beach and Chesapeake. So what you notice is that there is a lot less land that can be developed and new new homes to be built uh, in Norfolk. So because of that, it leads to fewer options for growth, fewer places that to, for new houses to be built. So over time, you're going to see the, the population numbers be relatively stagnant unless something drastically changes to adjust how uh, housing is built and provided for in Norfolk. Because it's an old city, the, the area has been developed a ton already, and so not much can be done over on a large scale uh, moving forward to change the population in a drastic way. Now, if you have any questions in more depth about Norfolk and moving to not just Norfolk, but other parts of Virginia Beach or Hampton Roads through Williamsburg, let me know. I've got my contact information in the description. You can also comment below to ask questions in more detail about things that uh, might be helpful to know about living and moving to Hampton Roads in Norfolk. You can ask me anytime and I'll do whatever I can to help you relocate to the area. And I will see you on the next video.